just want to greet everybody this morning in Jesus' name. Uh, I'm very, very thankful for all of you. Very thankful for this opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> as we go through life, there's uh, there's co- there's there's normal normal things. There's normal times where. Uh, we we can just say things are things are good or things are normal. And then there's stuff that happens that makes us exceedingly sad, or uh, and then and then there's and then there's things, and they're often on the heels of those things that if if we walk in uprightness, that make us exceedingly glad. Um, Anyway, I just I, I am just real thankful to be here. I just want to give a short devotional here for an opening. Um, let's uh, let's stand for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, and your kingdom come, and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray that your will be done in our midst. We pray that you would be with us. We thank you for this day, for brothers and sisters to gather with. Um, we ask for your spirit to, to abide with us. Um, we pray that all we do and say today could be in your name, bring glory to your name. Uh, I, I pray, Lord, that... That could be our, our, our goal or what we endeavor for is always to lift up your name. Um, and so help us. <clears throat> Bless each one here. Um, we believe that thine is the power and the glory and the, uh, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> My uh, <clears throat> my devotional this morning is out of the thirty third Psalm. But before I before I read that, I <clears throat> I'll share a little story. I was I was looking up some a little bit of history on on the country of Poland, and uh, for many for many centuries after after Poland started in the I think Poland maybe became a country in like year one thousand twenty-five or something like that. And for many centuries, it was, it was, uh, it was the most religiously tolerant uh, country in Europe. And so, and so, a lot of Jews went and settled in Poland because so many of the other European countries were uh, per- persecuted and and expelled Jewish people. <clears throat> But they found they found a little refuge there. Some sources say that by the 16th century, nearly three fourths of the Jewish population in the world lived in Poland. Uh, but in the 17th century, their government, the power in the Poland government, started to falter and started deteriorating from the inside and. A whole bunch of these little separatist movements grew up and and fought for control and power over the territory, <clears throat> and then and then there was this always uh, um, ever ever present in Europe was this this conflict this battle between the the Catholic and Protestant Christians you know um, f- politically fighting for power and um, 
by the end of the 18th century, it was a pretty tumultuous time for the Jews in Poland. Uh, they became the hated. In, entire Jewish villages got wiped out, got burnt, got destroyed. Um, and anyway, uh, the, the, the one story I came across said that one night an entire village, an entire Jewish village got, got burned and, and destroyed. Nothing, nothing was standing anymore. And the next morning as the sun was coming up, an old Jewish man hammered some boards together and made, made himself a cellar stall. And he sat there as if this was just another market day. And a young man passed by, and in disbelief, he looked at him and said, What are you going to sell among these ruins? And the old, the old man smiled and said, I'm selling hope. He said, the best, the best place to sell water is in a dry desert, and the best place to sell hope is on the ash heaps of destruction. <clears throat> God has done many great things on the ash heaps of destruction. In fact, God cannot really uh, demonstrate his power in us until we're yielded to him. And stubborn people as we are, we're often not yielded to him until we get to the very end of ourselves. Until we just... And, 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 until all the things that we would like to pursue fall in utter ruin and finally finally we turn to him and he can he can build something glorious out of that ash heap of destruction <clears throat> Moses had all kinds of ideas of how to deliver Egypt or, or Israel from the Egyptians but it wasn't until he had lost everything and his plans were utterly ruined he had no fame he had no political power he had no army to back him up he didn't even have a sword in his hand nothing but a staff and someone else's sheep that he was taking care of, it, it was then that, that God was ready to say, Moses, we're going to do this great thing. <clears throat> Naomi's family dreams were shattered. Her husband was dead. Her sons had died. She was in a foreign land. When she came back home, she said, don't call me Naomi. Call me bitter for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. She had no clue how her name would ring through the ages as being a great woman and that her daughter-in-law would contribute to bringing the Savior into the world. Job literally was brought to the ash heap of destruction. To that point in his life where he was like, why was I even born? Cursed be the day when they said a man-child was born. Why didn't they carry me from the womb to the grave? <clears throat> that's, how, that's how out of it he was. Not only did God raise him up to be a great man, but to this day, his patience has inspired many men to be like him. Paul says in Romans 5, we glory in tribulation because tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. Let's read, the th if, if you have a Septuagint, it's the 33rd Psalm. If, if you have the Masoretic text, it's the 34th Psalm. <clears throat> I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall be praised in the Lord. Let the gentle hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my sojourning. Come to him and be enlightened, and your face shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his afflictions. The angel of the Lord shall encamp around those who fear him, and he will deliver them. 
Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man whose hope is in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no want for those who fear him. Rich men turned poor and went hungry, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Stop right there for a little bit. The, the, the repeating theme here, and especially here in the, the last part, is, is that there's safety in those who fear him. <clears throat> The fear of the Lord is something we want to keep before our eyes all the days of our life. Tertullian said, fear is the foundation of salvation. Presumption is an impediment to fear. More useful, then, is it to apprehend that we may possibly fail than to presume that we cannot. For apprehending will lead us to fear, and fearing to caution, and caution to salvation. On the other hand, if we presume, there will be neither fear nor caution to save us. <clears throat> Continuing to read in verse 12, he says, Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life? who loves to see good days. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Shun evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are upon their supplications. The Lord's face is against those who do evil so as to destroy their remembrance from the earth. The righteous cried and the Lord heard them and he delivered them from all their afflictions. The Lord is near those who are broken hearted and he, and he will save the humble in spirit. The Lord is near those who are broken hearted and he will save the humble in spirit. <clears throat> I was reminded this week of something that happened in Jacob's life. Uh, the, the account is in Genesis. And uh, Jacob was having a, a miserable time with his family. Uh, he had... He had just bought a piece of land outside the city of Salem and he pitched his tents there and was raising his cattle there. And, and, and his, do his daughter Dina went out to visit the daughters of the land <clears throat> and this young man named Shechem in the city uh, took, desired her and defiled her. And, uh, uh, and, 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 and then they came to, to, to Jacob and said, uh, his father, Shechem's father, Hamar and, and Shechem came to, came to Jacob and said Hamar said my, my son loves your daughter please, please let us marry your daughters and we'll let you marry our daughters and let's share the land together let's be together and Jacob didn't answer for right away until, until his sons came in from the field and when his sons heard what happened they were they were exceedingly upset and Simon and Levi figured out a deceitful plan and, and they, they told and, and, and uh, Shechem and Hamar said just ask what you want ask what you want of us to make this to make this agreement that's, that's how much Shechem loves Dina and, and uh, Simon and Levi said we, we, can't, we can't give our daughters to you you're uncircumcised people this one thing you'll do if, you, if, if everybody if all the men in the city uh, are circumcised in the flesh, then we'll, then we'll do it. And they were like, that sounds good. We'll do it. And three days later, when all the men were in pain and in misery, Simon and Levi girded their swords and went in and just killed all the men in the city. Plundered the city, took, took the spoil, took the women, took the children, and, 
And when Jacob heard this, he said, You have made my name to stink. He was distressed. They dealt so deceitfully with him. Here his daughter just got defiled. His sons just murdered a whole city full of men. <clears throat> and, and Jacob was severely distressed. But this is what God said to him. Chapter 30, 35, verse 1, he says, Now God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. God is very, very interested in communicating with us in our lowest state. He's very, very interested in having us or, or, or being able to, to talk to us, to reach us in, in, a, in, in, in a very low state. <clears throat> He goes on in verse, if we skip down to verse 9, he says, Then God appeared to Jacob. This was after he went over there to Bethel where God told him to go and raise this altar. And, and then God appeared again, appeared to Jacob again when he came to, from Mesopotamia and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not any more be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. God also said to him, I am your God. Increase and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land I gave Abraham and Isaac I give to you and to your seed after you. I give this land. Then God ascended from him in the place where he talked with him. So Jacob set up a pillar in, it, in the place where he talked with him, a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering on it, and he poured oil on it. Thus, Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke to him, Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. <clears throat> let's, read the, let's read these last few verses in Psalm. Verse 20, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he will deliver them from them all. The Lord shall guard all their bones. Not one of them shall be broken. The death of sinners is evil. And those who hate the righteous shall go wrong. The Lord will redeem the souls of his servants, and all who hope in him shall not go wrong. I'm going to close with a poem. The title is Pain's Purpose. This, po this poem is special to me because someone real dear to me wrote it. It says, He knows my pain and fear. He wants to hold me near. Am I in a place to look in his face and see how he loves me dear? Suffering is too near. Pain, I don't want it here. But the hand of God still works the sod till his own image appears. Your kindness, O oh God, how it hurts. Satan my thoughts diverts. He blinds my eyes, he tells me lies while discouragement lurks. O oh God, I lift my eyes, you've heard my endless whys. In you I will trust, for I know that I must. Sometimes pain is love in disguise. May the Lord add his blessing. Amen, brother. Thank you. I'm probably going to sound like a broken record, but I just was sharing this testimony with somebody at work yesterday. Um, and I'm not sure if I shared it when I shared it here a few months back, but when I got all my stuff stolen and I was left out in the desert, <clears throat> it's actually called uh, the confusion. Wait. Um, it's the Utah Basin. It's called confusion range if you look on the map that's where they dumped me but anyways the man that i was hitchhiking with he he liked to sing karaoke did i share this it's, it's karaoke is like you sing along to the songs and and, and he kind of got upset at me because i wasn't singing along with them because there were a lot of worldly songs but one of them was this one song um oh, i might have told you this Dwayne, recently too but the song was um so good, 
sometimes love doesn't feel like it should hurt so good. And so that was the chorus of the song. And, and he had left me out in the middle of the desert. And all I could hear was that song playing over and over. Hurt so good. Sometimes love doesn't feel like it should hurt so good. But yeah, I really appreciated the devotional. It is, it is true that that is a place where God could really speak to us and use us in our. It's like it's like he he, he wants to break us down. He wants us to be broken so he can rebuild us.